Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is the case of the idol called Drupal Murders. May the four victims rest in peace, condolence to the families, and may the correct justice be served. Today, I'd like to discuss a bit about the private share ride that Kaylee and Maddie took home. I've heard a bit discussions about that from a couple of creators. This is for entertainment purpose only. Some people actually do not believe that the driver that drove the girls home drove them home. Some people actually think that the girls took the bus home. And the reason I don't find that to be true is because, let's not forget, this is a case with the Federal Borough of Investigation involved. The FBI is involved. And it's a federal crime to lie to the FBI. You could be prosecuted. So I don't understand why the private share driver would have any reason to lie. He drove the girls home. There was a misunderstanding about the timing. The police got it wrong at the start. They thought it was at 1.45, but they had to change it to 1.56 because Kaylee, the sister, Olivia, checked the phone records because they have some kind of phone family plan. And the driver did say that he dropped off Kaylee and Maddie. He said there was nothing unusual about that night. He dropped them off, dropped them off in front of the house. He said he did not drive into the driveway because he usually does that for his own safety's sake so that he wouldn't get robbed. And he's one of the four Uber party driver rides that is around. This wasn't the first time the girls took this driver. And then we have Kaylee's parents and sister both saying that he's a decent human being, that they consider him as, a, as part of their family. And I'm sure Chief Fry and his team has ruled him out. So I don't think that the driver had anything to do with that. But what I personally believe is that Maddie's coat could have got near Taylor Avenue just in case when Kaylee and Maddie opened the door and went inside Maybe somebody was already waiting for them there with Zana and Eaton. That is completely possible. And they could have run for their lives. And that is the time maybe Maddie took off her jacket and just threw it off. Or maybe the person who was running after her could have grabbed her jacket. The long black coat was too big for Maddie. We saw that clearly. I heard that it belonged to one of the Jacks. News tonight, 40 days into the University of Idaho murders and the driver, who was likely the very last man to see Maddie Mogan and Kaylee Gonzalez alive, is speaking to News Nation tonight. The Uber driver who brought the kids home the night of the murders, Kaylee's family reported that their daughter had indeed ordered an Uber. And now the man who drove them is revealing exclusive details to us about that ride home and what the girls said in the back of that car. News Nation correspondent Alex Capriello is live tonight. He tracked him down. He joins me from outside the home in Moscow. That was a, a very difficult task. Tell me what you found out, Alex. 
Yeah, I was able to find this rideshare driver. He's one of only about four here in the Moscow area. So I was able to track down that phone number and give him a call uh, personally, speak to him. I asked him point blank, hey, are you the guy who drove Kaylee and Maddie home that night? And uh, to his credit, he was very transparent, very honest, very open, almost immediately with me. Well, understandably, he has said, Alex, that he is very concerned. It's a small community. He doesn't want to be on camera, but he was very revealing in, in what he told you about that ride home. Start there. What did the girls talk about in the back seat? Well, he said that it was actually a rather innocent conversation from the beginning. You might remember that he picked up these two girls from that grub truck. It's the food truck that's located right in downtown Moscow. And really, he said that was the center of their conversation. The entire five minute ride home was about their mac and cheese carbonara that they were planning on splitting when they got back to the house. He said that he's picked them up in the past, not only these two girls, but Zana as well. And he said that in the past, they've talked about boys and drama and college life, but not this time around. It was just a very normal, innocent conversation about their food and how they were gonna share it when they got home. So that's also revealing that, that he knew them. He had had them in the car multiple times before. This is a small town. So if they've taken an Uber a couple of times, it would be likely that he'd be the driver. And he said, indeed, he knew them. He knew all three of them. Yeah, that's exactly right. He said that, obviously, as one of only about four rideshare drivers in this area, he picks up these girls a lot. And not to mention, we already know that this is so close to frat row. And of course, we've reported that this is a party house. So a lot of times uh, students would come here. And so he said that Zana, that Kaylee and Maddie were no strangers to them. He's given them rides home from the bars, uh, home from work, home from school. So he knows them. He uh, has driven them before. Uh, but back again to this, he said that there was nothing out of the ordinary that night that right now or in that moment uh, that it was just an innocent conversation. Of course, the frats were uh, bumping on a Saturday night, but here at the house, it was quiet and he saw nothing out of the uh, usual. So as you reported earlier this week, Alex, the last thing that we heard on tape was the surveillance camera showing Maddie and Kaylee walking from the Corner Club bar to the grub truck. And the only thing we could hear was, Maddie, what did, what did you tell Adam? And then Maddie responds, I told Adam everything. Was there any conversation in the back of the Uber car about Adam or the bartender? Because Adam turned out to be the bartender. Did, did you mention anything like that? Yeah, actually, the rideshare driver said that he knows Adam. He knows he's a bartender, but Adam was not brought up once at all during that conversation. Again, no conversations about boys, drama, or any trouble And as far as uh, what the girls were feeling. He said they were not fearful. They weren't skittish in any way. Uh, but back to the food truck, also, I asked him about that. Hey, you were right there. Did you see anything out of the ordinary there? And he said, no, it was a Saturday night at the food truck, a bunch of college kids hanging out, ordering their food before heading home. You know, I brought up uh, another person. A lot of people have speculated about the hoodie guy he's been uh, referenced as. He said he didn't see that guy. He has uh, no indication that anything was wrong there at the food truck. And certainly during that entire ride share home, no indication that anything was wrong there rather. Okay, then what about the police? Uh, because clearly I would have imagined the police have a lot more, um, you know, machinery and techn you know, technological ability than sometimes we do to track people down. I assume that the police would have found him and that they would have talked. What did he say about being able to tell everything he told you uh, to the police? Yeah, this was super interesting to me because he said that uh, he didn't hear about the murders until the next day. And he realized, oh, my gosh, these are the two girls that I had driven home and I've driven home in the past. And so he was stewing on that for a little bit. But he was the one who eventually turned himself over to the police by calling the tip line saying, hey, I was the one who drove these girls home. The police tells the rideshare driver that they already knew he was the driver. But even still, he was the one who called in himself and said, hey, I was that guy. That being said, when he did that, called the tip line, he turned over all of his GPS coordinates from that night, sharing that he went to Taco Bell after dropping the girls off and then went home. And so that's the reason why he was cleared almost immediately, He'd never been named as a suspect or a person of interest, because all the data that he provided to the police proves that he was not there at this house at the time that these murders allegedly happened.
So the other question is, as you are standing, almost, I imagine, in the same spot where they were dropped off, did he mention anything about the drop-off that was unusual? Anybody in the parking lot? Did he drive into the parking lot? Did he hear something, see something, pass anybody? Actually, the only thing he said was that he heard the frats doing their normal partying, but everything else seemed quiet, seemed normal. There were no uh, headlights. There was no one following him. He says he's got a great memory, and he would know whether or not anyone was trailing him or if there was anything suspicious at all. As far as the drop-off, uh, he said that he brought them right up the street here on King Road and dropped them off here at the foot of the driveway. He never pulls actually into the driveway because he says... Based on his training, he always wants to be able to have a quick getaway in the event that something bad happens to him, like he gets robbed on the side of the road. Uh, but he dropped them off here on King Road. He watched them get out of the car. He did not watch them physically go into the home, but he said that he trusted that they were going to be safe because he's driven them so many other times, and he knew that these two girls were together. Thank you for watching. So this is what the Uber driver, the private share private ride driver had to say about the night he drove the girls home. I've heard many people accusing him and obviously everything is just speculation and nothing should be left unturned. But from the beginning I have no reason to believe that the driver would be lying about it. Because let's not forget, this is the FBI. He'd be charged with a federal crime. He drove the girls and he dropped... What did he say? He, he drove them in front of the house, but he did not drive into the driveway because he was scared of being mugged. So that's the reason I believe that if anything happened to the girls after that maybe somebody was already waiting for them inside the house in the spare room and let's not forget there was no sign there was no struggle to get into the house because I believe it's one of the two either Maddie and Kaylee when they got in and went upstairs maybe to the room Zana and Eaton could have been ordering. I don't think they even ordered the food. I think somebody let in the killer or the killers. I really believe that somebody left the door open on purpose. But why was the door left open, the front door? Eight in the morning, 8.30 in the morning, somebody, a neighbor was on his way to work. And the front door was wide open. So this is... This is basically what the Uber driver said. He said everything was normal that night. The girls were talking about their food and how they're going to share it. But one thing that I found interesting is that he said he knows Adam. Obviously, this is a small town with one or two pubs, I'm sure, around, a couple of pubs. So they all know Adam. He's a student. He's a football star. And he's a bartender. But it's strange that the driver said he doesn't know John Schwalter, Jack Schwalter. But I don't think the girls took the bus home. I find that really difficult to believe. It was really late. We could see that Maddie could barely stand with the rest in peace. And I really believe that the girl got roofies in the drink, at least Maddie. Nothing was normal about that night. If you play, if you pay closer attention to it, and I really wonder if the people who did these unlivings were in the grub truck live stream, if they were watching it live from there, maybe even donating money.
to the live stream itself. But there was a lot of dodgy things going on in the grub truck, Banfield, the figures running. But really wonder how Maddie's coat got in Taylor Avenue. That doesn't make sense. And another thing that I debunked that the girls could have taken the bus or taken other means of transport besides the Uber driver is because Jovito said that the Uber driver drove a blue car, according to him. That's what he thought. Let me know what you all think in the comment channel. Have a lovely weekend.